Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. I am Smriti Rastogi. The United States on Wednesday signed the first phase of trade deal with China. The deal brings to a close over a year of tough negotiations to ease tensions over between the two countries. These tensions saw several months of talks being suspended between the two largest economies of the world. For now, however, both US and China have described their pact as historic and a win-win agreement. US and China have engaged in a tit-for-tat tariff war since 2018. It led to extra import of taxes being levied on more than $450 billion worth of traded goods and a shrinking of global trade as a result. The genesis of the trade war goes back to even before Donald Trump was elected president of the USA when he advocated tariffs to reduce the US trade deficit and promote domestic manufacturing. Today, in-depth looks at the new trade deal between the US and China and how the market has reacted to this latest development. We also look at how the trade war developed between the two countries and what has been its impact on India especially. After more than two years of rising tensions, the US and China have signed a deal aimed at easing their trade war, while China has pledged to boost US imports by $200 billion above 2017 levels and strengthen intellectual property rules. The US has agreed to half some of the new tariffs it has imported on the Chinese products. The deal sets the stage for a stronger relationship between the two countries, hoping to further softening of the trade tensions between the world's two largest economies. Here's a look at the first phase of the latest US-China trade deal. It is finally on paper. The US on Wednesday signed the first phase of a trade deal with China. It is a deal that aims to ease the trade war that has rattled markets and weighed on the global economy. Signed on Wednesday in Washington, the deal brings down the curtain on more than a year of tough negotiations, including several months of suspension of talks between the two largest economies of the world. The two sides described the pact as historic and a win-win agreement. Today we take a momentous step, one that has never been taken before with China, toward a future of fair and reciprocal trade as we sign phase one of the historic trade deal between the United States and China. This is a trade deal between the United States and China that can stabilize the global trade and peace in the world. It can be used to the two countries, the consumers and the consumers. So what does the deal say, according to the terms of the pact? China has pledged to boost U.S. imports by $200 billion above 2017 levels and strengthen intellectual property rules. In exchange, the U.S. has agreed to halve some of the new tariffs it has imposed on Chinese products. I think it's very positive that the two largest economies in the world, uh, the US and China, has agreed on the first step uh, on trade. I think that is sending positive uh, growth signals, not only uh, to China and to the US, but to the rest of the world. I hope that uh, based on this agreement, uh, there will be a second phase and a, and a third phase, because we know that uh, China and the US is more than 40% of the global economy. And um, if these two nations can find solutions. I think that is also positive for the rest of the world. See, the main dispute between the US and China was regarding two issues. The first issue was that the US had a tremendous trade deficit with China. And the second issue was that the US government felt that China was stealing technology from, from them and from the rest of the world. The fact that the deal has been signed means that uh, the 
uncertainty globally that was there because of the two largest economies uh, basically squabbling with each other. Uh, those tensions will now ease. However, US will maintain up to 25% tariffs on an estimated $360 billion worth of Chinese goods and China, which has levied new tariffs on $100 billion worth of US products, is also expected to maintain the majority of them. Experts say it is only a small proportion of the tariffs being reversed and relatively minor concessions is being granted by both sides. They add that Washington's fundamental complaints about Chinese practices from its approach to subsiding businesses to cyber theft remain unresolved. However, Trump has defended maintaining the bulk of the tariffs, saying they will provide leverage in future talks. But this so-called deal does ne next to nothing of substance for workers and businesses feeling the brutal, merciless weight of China's trade and industrial abuse. I greatly fear that President Xi is laughing at us behind our backs for having given away so little at the expense of American workers, farmers and businesses. The U.S. and China have engaged in a tit-for-tat tariff war since 2018, which has led to extra import taxes being levied on more than $450 billion worth of traded goods. The ongoing dispute has disrupted trade flows, dampened global economic growth and unnerved investors. We are a report, Raj Sabha TV. For markets across the world, the big question is will the US-China trade deal revive global trade and put economies on the growth path? While the US president has himself called it a transformative deal that will bring great benefits for the two countries, market analysts see it only as a first step towards a long process to bring global trade back to normal. Our next story looks at how the deal will affect Asia and in particular India. Asian currencies traded higher on Thursday on hopes that the first phase of the US-China trade deal could help revive global growth. Even as experts debated the future impact of the deal, the markets seemed to be reading the bottom line that tariffs aren't going up any further this year. One of the most positive aspects of the deal is China's pledge to buy at least an additional $200 billion worth of US farm products and other goods and services over the next two years. China is one of the, I mean, is, is an economy whose growth performance has fairly significant consequences for other parts, particularly of the developing world, who depend upon. Uh, Chinese export, uh, exports to China for their own growth moment. But this was not enough to make the markets exuberant, mainly because the deal does not address many of the issues that led to the trade conflict in the first place. For one, the US-China agreement does not entirely eliminate tariffs. Further, it is vague on enforcement. And lastly, many analysts are skeptical of just how realistic the purchase targets are. The uh, issue really is that even if one signs a deal today, uh, there is nothing to prevent any country from uh, changing that subsequently. So if, for instance, uh, say the US feels that China has not kept to its word in terms of whatever is the, uh, whatever are the details in this trade deal, and the trade deal essentially says that China will buy 200 billion worth of uh, goods from USA, so if for some reason they do not, then quite obviously the U.S. will reserve the right to you know, uh, take fresh steps. In Asia, reactions of the stock markets were mixed. Analysts say this could be because the agreement was long expected and the markets had already factored in its positive effects. The larger sense is that the deal is not going to result in totally free trade and lower tariffs in a hurry. For India, the trade tensions between US and China had some benefits. An SBI report in July last year stated that India managed to export more items to China. These exports were at a much faster rate than that to the US. With uh, the normalization of relationship, uh, uh, you know, India, US-China trade may again start going up. 
and uh, to that extent that India was supplying intermediate products to either the Chinese manufacturers or the US manufacturers, uh, it, its exports can pick up but only a little bit, not very much. And on the other hand, I must say that uh, India had gained a few billion dollars uh, according to some estimates uh, by displacing the Chinese exports to the US which were uh, getting hit by high tariffs of about 25%. While overall exports to the US grew 9.46% to 52.4 billion US dollars in 2018-19, for China this growth was 25.6% to 16.7 billion dollars. According to the report, goods that saw an increase in exports to China included plastic, cotton, inorganic chemicals and fish. The report concluded that India made modest gains in capturing the market. These gains could have been higher. According to Chief Economic Advisor Krishnamurti Subramanian, Indian exports are just below 2% of global trade, which indicated an enormous growth potential. The CEA pointed out that India could benefit more provided the export industry improved its productivity. With inputs from Kunal Singh, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The US-China trade war is an ongoing economic conflict between the world's two largest economies. It began in 2018 with US President Donald Trump for setting tariffs and other trade barriers on China with the goal of forcing it to make changes to what America claims are unfair trade practices. Among those practices and their effects are the growing trade deficit, the theft of intellectual property and the forced transfer of American technology to China. Let us now understand the chronology of the events that unfolded leading to this trade war. Even before he was elected president of the USA, Donald Trump has advocated tariffs to reduce the US trade deficit and promote domestic manufacturing. He has maintained that America was being ripped off by its trading partners and the imposition of tariffs became a major plank of his presidential campaign. Even though some economists and politicians argue that the country's persistent trade deficit is problematic, many economists say that it is not a problem with even fewer advocating tariffs as a solution. I'm angry at stupidity. I'm angry at incompetence. I'm angry when China is making $500 billion a year and sucking our, our jobs and sucking our money out of our country and we don't do anything about it. I'm not angry at China, I'm angry at our politicians. The trade war has been criticized internationally, including by US businesses and agricultural organizations, as it has hit the two sectors harder than others. It all started in March 2018 with the US president announcing tariffs of 25% on steel imports and 10% on aluminium from a number of countries, including China. Hours before the taxes were to be levied, Trump suspended the tariffs for the other countries, but not China. A few days later, on March 22nd, the president signed a memo denouncing the Asian giant's economic aggression. It did not stop there. On July 6, 2018, the U.S. slapped punitive duties on about $34 billion US dollars worth of Chinese products. The products included cars, hard disks and aircraft parts. Beijing retaliated soon after, imposing tariffs of equal size and scope, including on American farm products, especially soybeans, as well as cars and marine products. On August 23rd, Washington imposed duties on another 16 billion US dollars worth of Chinese goods, and China responded with 25% tariffs on 16 billion US dollars worth of US products. This continued into September that year, with both sides taxing even more goods. In December 2018, the two sides declared a truce and Washington delayed planned tariff increases by three months. Beijing in turn promised to increase purchases of US farm goods, suspended tariffs on autos and its parts and allowed rice imports. This is going to be a small deal with China. This is either going to be a very big deal or it's going to be a deal that we'll just postpone for a little while. 
but the truce did not last very long, with hostilities resuming in May 2019. On May 10, Washington increased the punitive duties on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods to 25%, also accusing Beijing of going back on central commitments made in the negotiations for truce. Five days later, Trump barred U.S. companies from using foreign telecoms equipment deemed a security risk, a move that was aimed at Chinese company Huawei. On June 1, China retaliated, increasing tariffs on $60 billion worth of U.S. products. On August 1, Trump announced new 10% tariffs on another $300 billion U.S. dollars in Chinese goods, later increased to 15%. China fired back, raising tariffs on all U.S. imports. The same month, China allowed its currency, the yuan, to fall below 7 to the dollar for the first time in 11 years. Washington was quick to react and accused Beijing of manipulating its currency to help its exports. On August 13, the United States decided to delay until December 15 imposition of tariffs on some products to shield holiday shoppers from sudden price hikes but other tariffs either stayed or went up. This led China to announce that it will hit $75 billion US dollars worth of US imports with new tariffs in retaliation for the looming hikes. On September 2, China lodged a complaint at the World Trade Organization. Two days later, Trump announced import duties on structural steel from China, accusing Chinese manufacturers of dumping. On December 13 last year, Washington and Beijing announced a Phase 1 deal under which Beijing agreed to import $200 billion worth of U.S. products over two years. The U.S. cancelled new tariffs that were due to kick in on December 15 and promised to slash in half the 15% tariffs on $120 billion U.S. dollars imposed in September on consumer goods like clothing. China also suspended new planned taxes. Uh, this is a very large deal, the China deal. It covers tremendous manufacturing, farming, uh, a lot of rules, regulations. A lot of things are covered. It's a phase one deal, but a lot of big things are covered. And I say affectionately, the farmers are going to have to go out and buy much larger tractors because it means a lot of business, a tremendous amount of business. Before the two sides signed the latest deal to pause the trade war, the U.S. also dropped currency manipulation accusations as a sign of reconciliation and easing tensions. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV The United States and China are two natural trading partners and their economic and trade relations have brought enormous benefits to both the sides as demonstrated by the highest level of bilateral trade between any two countries in history. Our next report takes a look at the complex ties between the two nations that go back four centuries. Relations between the US and China date back to the 18th century when the Empress of China sailed from the United States arriving in Guangzhou or erstwhile Canton in August of 1784. The journey marked the new nation's entrance into the lucrative China trade in tea, porcelain and silk but only through a set group of Chinese merchants with official licenses to trade. Official diplomatic relations between China and US began in 1844 with the signing of the Treaty of Wangxia, 60 years after the first US ship had sailed into Chinese waters. The terms included extraterritoriality for US citizens in China most favored nation status and a guarantee for treaty revision in 12 years. This marked the beginning of official diplomatic relations between the United States and China. In 1847, when the coolie trade began, over 1 lakh Chinese laborers known as coolies came to the United States within the first 20 years. However, decades later in 1875, the US placed first restrictions on Chinese immigrants by passing the Page Act. In 1878, China finally established a diplomatic mission in Washington marking the beginning of full bilateral ties between the United States and China. Between 1894 and 95, the US gained several new privileges in China, including the right to build factories after Japan won the first Sino-Japanese War. While US made considerable inroads into China, the US parliament continued to pass restrictive legislation on Chinese immigration and the ultimate removal of the Chinese people that already stayed in the United States. This led to protests and boycott of American products and businesses in China. 
Finally, in 1943, the two nations signed the treaty formally ending 100 years of extraterritoriality in China, bringing an end to the legal privileges long held by foreigners. Simultaneously, the United States passed legislation allowing Chinese immigration for the first time in 60 years, although it was under a very low quota. In 1949, the Chinese Communist Party established the People's Republic of China in Beijing, but the United States extended support to the exiled Republic of China government in Taipei, setting the stage for several decades of limited U.S. relations with mainland China. The United States did not formally recognize the People's Republic of China for 30 years after its founding. In 1979, the United States ended official relations and its defense treaty with the nationalist regime on Taiwan and formal embassies were established in Beijing and Washington. In the same year, the two countries signed a trade agreement that enabled Chinese products to receive temporary most favored nation tariff status. In 1986, China joined the Asian Development Bank and applied for membership in the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade and the World Trade Organization, which was not initially supported by the US. Three years later, in 1989, the United States and other nations imposed economic sanctions on China. While tensions continued, diplomatic ties were never severed and China remained open to foreign trade. In 1992, US-China relations were rekindled and in 1999, after several rounds of talks, the US finally agreed to make China part of the World Trade Organization. In October 2000, US President Bill Clinton signed the US-China Relations Act of 2000 granting Beijing permanent normal trade relations with the United States and paving the way for China to join the World Trade Organization in 2001. Between 1980 and 2004, US-China trade rose from $5 billion to $231 billion. In 2006, China surpassed Mexico as the United States' second largest trade partner after Canada. In September 2008, China surpassed Japan to become the largest holder of U.S. debt at around $600 billion. The growing interdependence between the U.S. and Chinese economies became evident as a financial crisis threatened the global economy, fueling concerns over U.S.-China economic imbalances. The problem uh, with the U.S.-China trade tension was that it was creating uh, adverse effects on global trade and investment flows because today we have a globalized world where uh, goods you know uh, cross borders at the intermediate primary stage intermediate stage then they go and get finished somewhere which is part of the global value chain so both the chinese and the american manufacturers they uh, are part of the global value chain and uh, because of the tensions that the two were having and the tariff war that was going on between the two, the global value chain was getting disrupted very badly. So it was affecting many other countries uh, which uh, were supplying to either China or the US or both. So uh, this uh, uh, in fact uh, was also leading to reluctance on the part of investors to invest. In 2012, the U.S. trade deficit with China rose from $273.1 billion in 2010 to an all-time high of $295.5 billion in 2011. The U.S. trade deficit with China was on pace to close out 2019 at about $353 billion U.S. dollars, according to figures through October of 2019. With Kunal Singh, Bureau Report, Rajasabha Television. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of In Depth. We will be back same time tomorrow with a focus on another key subject. You can also watch our program online on YouTube. Suggestions and feedback about the program are welcome. Thank you for watching.